Hello and thank you for watching. This video will be a tutorial and a playthrough for Boris Berlin's Essential Daily Exercises and this is set number four. The first portion of the video will be the tutorial and then you can skip ahead for the playthrough at the end if you wish to get a full set in, so to speak. We're going to start with set number four, exercise one for the independence of fingers. And you'll notice if you've seen some of the other tutorials that the first one started with five finger position, and then the second one, a little bit bigger, third one, first inversion chords, and now we're moving up to a triad, but using fingers one, two, and three. So that's kind of like preparation for a full octave span. So you'll get the most out of this particular exercise if you get your fingers set on the grip point and then turn them slightly to the right. We don't want to have it too straight because that will create a lot of tension. So we're going to have the natural um, curve of the hand towards the right side. So left hand, you'll be curving towards the left. So there's a little bit of a U shape right here, but you're still playing on that grip portion of your finger pads. We're going to concentrate on having a strong bridge, which is part of your hand and strong knuckles on the first knuckle. No buckling. So it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have a big down. And then another one. I always like to have a flow with my wrist. So the goal is strong fingers and lots of notes in one wrist gesture. You can play a little bit faster if you wish, and so forth. This is set number four, exercise one. This is the side view. I just wanted you to see the wrist motion in this one as you go through the four notes. So it's This is set two for relaxation. We've had this with many of the other fingers. It's the same exercise. What's gonna feel different is that the thumb, you're gonna be playing on the side of the thumb. It's gonna be the same gesture, but your hand's gonna to have to be closer in to the keys because the thumb is shorter. Fingers two and three, you see they're kind of in the middle of this white area, the key. You're gonna to have to scoot in for the thumb. So the other fingers are gonna feel a little bit more towards the black keys. Same gesture though, you're gonna roll off. The release is the move. Little mini rainbow. And then also try this on the black keys so you can get used to thumb on black keys and how close the rest of your hand gets to the fall board. Fall board is this area where the name of the piano is. This is set number four, exercise three. This is for stretching. Again, same exercise, it's just gonna feel a little bit different because the stretching finger this time is gonna be the pinky, finger number five. And this will also feel slightly different than the ones previous because the pinky is a shorter finger, almost an inch shorter than finger four, we're gonna have to be a little bit closer into where the black keys are for this to work, which is also gonna require slight turning of an angle and you're gonna be playing with a large bulk of your thumb here on the middle C. So you're gonna roll up as you stretch and notice this U shape here at the bottom of your hand. If you can only go up to A, then just stop on A. Here is set number four. This is exercise number four for passing over the thumb and the scales. So what we've been working through is all the crosses in a C major scale. So this is the top one here, finger four to finger two. So what we're gonna be doing is pivoting the hand over the thumb. We wanna kinda of keep this shape of the hand. If you see, it's kind of like a little half circle, half moon. So we don't wanna do a lot of angles like this, but rather keep that half moon shape over the thumb. So we'll have finger four, finger two. You wanna play the fingers on the key. If I had drawn a half moon, where they would go. So you see how finger three would be closer to the blacks, the four is a little bit further out. 
Now this one at a time. Nice firm first knuckles. Nice bridge. Here's set number four, exercise four for passing over the thumb and the scales. I want you to see that how the hand, where the wrist is located, and how we're just pivoting over. There's not a lot of down up. We're just pivoting right over as we do this one. Here is set number four, exercise five for the octaves. And this one is just going to be the reverse of the one in the previous set. This time we're going to have the thumb doing a little bit of a crescendo to that last whole note with the accent on it. So we'll get our hands set. Two, three, get ready. Touch, 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 touch. Two, three, four. If your hands are small, do it um, at what interval you can reach. I'm going to do a six. You can do that same thing. Just getting used to voicing the bottom part of the octave. Because sometimes when you play octaves, you're going to want to voice or make louder the top portion. Sometimes you're going to want to make the thumb. More likely in the left hand to make the thumb louder, but sometimes in the right hand you have to do that as well. Here is set number four, exercise six for the trills. Lots of things to think about in this version of this exercise. It's fingers four and five. Four is a weak finger, five is a short finger, so we've got to accommodate for both of those things. The first thing we're going to do is instead of having our hands straight on, which would cause our elbows to crash into our middle of our body, we're going to have the hand turn at a slight angle. Um, and then if you notice, then my fingers can be more on the same plane versus here where they'd be kind of far apart. We want them to be a little closer together. The goal is we're going to try to get four notes in a gesture. However, we're also going to try to make sure that we keep an anchor. And so Boris Berlin has written that first by having an accent on the first one. So down, up, and then I like to keep my wrist going up, but still make contact with the next E. So I call that the press up. So we have down, up, press. tenuto on the third note allows us to keep contact with the keys for faster trills. The alternative would be if we had down, up, 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 then you're not grounded when you redo the figure. So then with the triplets, we're getting three notes in a gesture. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. So the last part of this is tricky. We've got the fourth finger, which is weak. We've got the fifth finger, which is short. It's going to be on the black key. It's hard to find the grip point. It wants to slip off that. And we're further into the keys to accommodate for the black key. So therefore, our hand's at more of an angle. And it's just a little bit trickier. So see if you can find that grip point, grabbing four notes in one gesture. So down, up, 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 down. Keep your fingers on the keys especially for this one. Don't lift off the keys to play this. Keep them on the keys, kind of shaking back and forth. Set number four, exercise six, side view for the trills. The hand is turned to the side. We're going to stand up, touch, stand, touch. And the triplets, four notes. Notice where the accents are. Here is exercise seven for the repeated notes. You use this pattern in music very, very often, triplet repeated notes, three, two, one. So it, this is a good opportunity to learn how to do this correctly. There's lots of ways to do the repeated notes. I like to think of them as we're going to have these three spots on the key that we're repeating. So the third finger is going to own this part of the key, the second finger is going to own here, and the thumb's going to own the tip. So then we kind of take 
turns. The wrist is going to be slightly higher for this one, by the way, so it's not going to be way down here. I like to think that you're kind of hanging from a higher wrist. And try it on the blacks. Blacks are very slippery, but really important to practice on the black keys. Another way to do this is to kind of do a little circle like this. I prefer to do it as an angle, but really you have to look at what is happening in the music. So you might practice it both this way and in this kind of circular way. Set number four, exercise seven. Just notice where the wrist is. We're not way up here, we're not way down here. We're just kind of a little bit raised as we pass. Here is set number four, exercise eight for the double thirds. We've been working on this exercise eight, which requires a lot of brain power. You are trying to get your fingers to move as a unit, the fingers of the thirds. And now it, it's more challenging because we're holding down three notes instead of one. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our super strong hand position, starting with the wrist under, then I'm gonna push it up. I'm pushing a car seat up. We've got a nice high bridge right here. It's the bridge. And I'm focusing on all these first joints to make sure they are not buckling or caving. So, and this one I'm really thinking hard about keeping the other fingers down and moving as a unit. And do your best on this one. It takes a while to get really good at this. So first one, we're holding down five, four, and two. We're moving thumb and third finger as a unit. a big down, up, contact, up. Then we do five, three, one. I feel like this one's the most challenging because of the weakness of finger four. Let's give it a shot sweep. Then press and lift. Then three doesn't want to stay down. You see my three, it's kind of fighting. And then finally, four, two, one is held down. And then we're moving five, three as a unit, down, up, press, up. So I'm really trying to release those at the same time. Set number four, exercise eight from the side view. Notice the nice bridge. Notice the nice shape of the hands standing up and going through. This is set number four, exercise nine for the triads. And this is good for passages where you might have this is kind of thing. Or... So the goal of this one is to have one down gesture per group of three notes. So we don't want to be going down, 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 down. down. We want to have. So if you see my wrist, it's kind of. So you notice the first one has an accent, the second one doesn't. So I like to think down, up, up, touch, up, up, down, touch, down, touch, down, touch. My fingers are staying on the keys, very close to the keys, and I'm using mostly my wrist to roll through this. Then the second half of this is um, you're rolling your wrist. I like to say like it's an, like an airplane taking off. The wrist is the airplane taking off it's rolling up and releasing. So you might check the video on the side view of that one. Set number four, exercise nine, side view. I want you to notice how the wrist comes up. Some slight little wrist motions there. This is set number four, exercise 10 for the five fingers. I like these articulation exercises, they're fun. So we're concentrating on bridge, we're concentrating on nice shape of the hands, and then we're concentrating on feeling that grip point and rolling through and moving between the fingers, kind of rolling side to side. So if you'll notice in this one, we have an accent every six notes. So kind of like in the trills, 
you're going to be accenting, make contact switch, accent, make contact, accent, make contact. One more time, and there's one little finger switch in there, so we've got two, one, one, make contact, down, contact, down, contact. So you have three notes in a group, but the contact one you're not going to feel as much as a down. So then when you want to get fast, it makes it faster to do that. Because if you go down, 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 your hand's going to get tense. So the goal of this one, try to get six notes basically in a gesture. Uh, here's set number four, exercise 10 for the five fingers. Nice hand position, keeping very close to the keys. Here is number 11 for the skips. This is just getting you used to, you're playing a one chord, you're playing a five chord, you're playing a one chord. And what are the inversions for that? So we have first a 10th, five, seven, first inversion. How does that feel? So the, um, I guess the bonus way of practicing number 11 is can you do it with your eyes closed? See if you can do it with your eyes closed, so then you get very good keyboard geography. Here is set number four, exercise 12. This is for chords, chord voicing. We're going to practice bringing out different notes in the chord position. Sometimes in a piece, you might be bringing out the bottom note for your melody, or the second finger, or the middle, or the top. So this helps practice with this. This exercise does require a large hand, so I will demonstrate it with the octave. However, if your hand is smaller, I'd suggest doing it with the outer interval of a six, and then um, just use whatever fingers they say. So it's five, three, two, wherever they're fitting. So use the fingering, just a smaller octave. So when you're doing the larger position, notice I'm not clenching and straight out like this. I'm turning a little bit to the right. I like to think this looks like a little bird. Um, here's his beak. Anyway, turn to the side, and then we're going to touch. Then we switch the fingers. You'll notice you might be playing kind of on the side portion of the pads of your fingers. Always trying to maintain as good of a bridge as you can and as firm of a first knuckle as possible. Here is set number four for tremolos, rotating your hand back and forth for things like dramatic moments in the music. <clears throat> so we want our hands to be nice and jiggly. So your wrist is gonna be a little higher. You're gonna be in the keys, not really leaving the keys. You're not gonna be playing from the tops. I like to think that we're kind of living about halfway down the key. We're not letting it go much higher than that uh, when we play. So this is first inversion. We did root position last time. So we're going to be first inversion, one on the bottom and five twos together. So jiggling back and forth, you're just going to try to feel the downs where the accents are. So down, 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 down. Do you notice my hands kind of going back and forth? Down, up, up. is shaking back and forth. And finally, side view of set number four, exercise 10. Just notice how the hands are jiggling within the keys. First inversion. Trying to get that five, two to sound together. This is the complete playthrough of Boris Berlin's Essential Daily Exercises. Set four, we'll start with the right hand, alternate with the left hand. A few things might not show up in the video, some of the extremes, but please play along and I'll do it at kind of a medium tempo, discussing a few things along the way. So we're gonna start with the right hand, number one, and the goal here is to keep a, a firm hand 
and firm fingers as you ascend the scale and you feel this larger stretched out position. of different keys so I get used to what the geography for those keys is. Left hand's going to be angled the other way. We're going to be going on black keys also. Playing on the side of your thumb. Left hand. The release gets us to the next note. Then black keys. Harder on the black keys. They're more slippery. Here's for stretching. We're going to set our hand up <coughs> kind of sideways. that pad on the top of the pinky. One more time. You might have to use a little bit more of your pinky to do this. It's a smaller finger. Left hand one for this is a little bit easier because you're not dealing with stretching and then having to walk in and out of three black keys at the bottom. Now I've got number four, getting the thumb set, trying to keep our other fingers in that half circle, that half moon. We'll do two more. Then pivoting. Left hand's going to be down here on low C. Same thing. Four, two, do four of them. Three, one at a time. trails we're going to do four repeats on each so we start with the right hand four and five trying to get four and five kind of on the same plane my hands at slight angle and we're going to do down up touch down touch three four then triplets We'll do four of them. Down, up, two more. One more. Left hand, same thing. It's going to be facing this way instead of this way because of the length of the pinky. So we have four notes in one group. Down, up, touch. Make contact. Anchor those notes that go together so they don't go crazy. Triplets, we'll do four of them. key one, slippery, two more, one more, here's our repeated notes, we're going to get our hand set, wrist a little bit higher, so we can feel very loose as we pass through these, I'm going to set up kind of like in a row here on the key, two, one more time, 
and I'm going to do it on the black keys, very slippery, more difficult. Keep your hands very close. Four more. Three, two, one. Left hand, same thing. Setting up the angle will be opposite for the left hand. So three, two, one, two. keys. The thumb always wants to fall off the black keys. All right, now for double thirds, exercise eight, standing up. We're going to do all the repeats on this one. So five, four, two. Here we go. One and touch. Big one. Little one. Switching, five, three, one, don't hold. Four, two, up, touch, up. Try to get them to sound at the same time. Four, two, one, five, three, two more. Left hand, starting with two, four, five, nice shape, nice half circle. Nice bridge. Here we go. Two more. Really focusing on trying to get those to be at the same time. We're going to hold one, three, five. See if four wants to behave. Number nine for the triads, more notes in a gesture. We're going to repeat once on this one. So we're going to go down, up, touch, down, touch. Then the airplane, the wrist is going up. Left hand, same thing. Touch, down, touch. Number ten for the five fingers. There's one finger switch in this. We're trying to get six notes in a gesture. So we have Same thing, hands very close, nice shape, and good hand position. Here we go. Down, contact, down, contact, down, contact, down, a little faster. And I always try number 10 in lots of different keys so you get the different topography. Actually, I do all of these, 8, 9, 10, lots of different keys of C, D flat, D and so forth. Also try the minors if you wish, that sort of thing. Makes it more fun. Next one, 11. For the skips, we're just getting used to the feeling of a 10th, one chord to five chord. One more time, see if you can make sure the chords sound together when you're just touching them. The staccati on this and different for the left hand. Different notes for the left hand. Touch, 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 touch. Strive so the notes hit at the same time. For chords with the right hand, we're going to get set in an octave, kind of spread out with a U here. Here we go. Do the repeats. Chord, touch, touch, touch. Chord, touch, touch, touch. Chord, touch, touch. Switch to five. Left hand, we're gonna have two, four, five. Same thing. Chord, touch, touch. The left hand angle will feel a little bit different because the inversion feels different in the left hand. So actually, this one feels a little bit easier in the left hand.
Finally, number 13 for tremolos, right hand first, first inversion chord. We're going to be rocking back and forth, making contact on those accents. We'll do one repeat. So. Left hand feels a little bit different because it's a third, not a fourth. Here we go. Thank you for watching this tutorial and playthrough of Boris Berlin's Essential Daily Exercises. These are my favorite exercises to do, and I usually combine them with a regimen of scales and arpeggios and broken chords and chord progressions. There will be more videos on that later, but at this time, thank you very much for tuning in. I will do a full set of 20 tutorials for this book, and I hope you will subscribe and see some of my other videos on this channel. Thanks again for watching.